Yay, do I walk into battle instead of death? I will fear the evil. Thou art a rod in thy staff. They comfort me. Really, surely goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. I would dwell in the house of the Lord for him. John writes, did not your heart God, you be lost in me. In my father's house, or in a mansion, it would not so. I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be all. And where I go, you know. And the way you know. I said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, no man comes to the Father. If you had known me, Now you know him and have a thing. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and it is sufficient for us. That's the question we have. And yet you have not known me, Philip. He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, Show us the Father? I am in the Father, and the Father in me. The words that I speak, I do not speak with all the heart. But the Father who dwells in me does. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Believe me for the sake of the works themselves. Verily I say unto you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, he will also do it. Greater works. Because I go to my father. Oh, yes. Oh, yes.
Yes. Amen. Nothing too hard for God. Quick announcements. There's a BMW blue parked and handicapped. You got your flashes on. A Nissan Rogue is black. You got flashes on. And the Fenway SUV have their flashes on. Amen. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. Come on, y'all. God has moved in his mighty way. Let's give him glory and praise right now. We're here for a celebration of life of Brother Mr. Norman Barrett. Amen? Amen. 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 And the family has outlined a program. We have a congregational song, uh, Old and New Testament, Minister Valerie Starks, uh, solo, Mr. Ms. Williams, obituary at Sally, and then we'll come back. Amen? Amen. And let's follow in that order. Uh, we got a prayer. We're going to ask Pastor Leonard to do us a prayer after the reading of the scriptures. Amen. Amen. Minister starts. Hello, everyone. I am Minister Valerie Starks and Norman. Aaron was my father. And on behalf of us, we thank you for loving him and being here. I'm going to get through this. You know, unfortunately, in death, we tend to understand and know that with joy and happiness in life comes pain and grief. 
when that love is lost. But there are some who bring a light so great in this world that even after they're gone, the light remains. And I can see from the faces in this room and his family that his light shone brightly. And I would say to keep your face always toward the sunshine, toward the light of God. And the shadows will always fall behind you. The darkness shall cease as your mind is stayed on Jesus. So anytime you hear his name, let it not be a reminder that he's no longer with us. It is reminding you that he lived and that light has shone and that is a great gift. And he left that light upon each and every one of you and may the blessings of the Lord be upon you. In Revelation 14, 13, it says, then I heard a voice from heaven say, write this, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the spirit, they will rest their labor for their deeds will follow them. Know that my father, that Norman Barron is at rest before the Lord. Amen. Amen. I come before you. I'm going to do a congregational song that we pretty much all know. And we all need a place to go once we leave this place. Won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Oh, won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Just to go home to live with Jesus. Won't it be grand? Oh, won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? And won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Just to go home to live with Jesus. Won't it be grand? Now, when I get through serving out here, uh, out in the sunshine, out in the rain. Now I'm going home to live with Jesus. Won't it be grand? Oh, won't it be grand? And won't it be grand? And won't it be grand? Won't it be grand? Just to go home to live with Jesus, won't it be grand? Yeah. Now when I get through yeah. serving on here, or out in the sunshine, out in the rain, yeah. I'm going home to live with Jesus, won't it be grand? Oh, won't it be grand? Oh, won't it be grand? And won't it be grand? Just to go home to live with Jesus. Won't it be grand? Just now when I get through praying down here. Uh, out in the sunshine, out in the rain, Lord, I'm going home to live with Jesus. Won't it be grand? Lord, won't it be grand? And won't it be Lord, won't it be grand? And won't it be grand? Lord, not just to go home to live with Jesus. Won't it be grand? I give an honor today to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and to the family. I come with just a word of prayer right now. 
I hope the word will comfort you. Father God, we come right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we come saying thank you. Thank you for this life, Mr. Barron, for 89 years, Father, on this side. Father God, we know that we will miss him. The family will miss him. But Father God, you know best. Father, we ask you to hold this family up on every side. Father, strengthen them where they are weak. Build them up where they are torn down. And Father God, hold them up, Father. Father God, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Father, I don't know when their morning will come, but I'm here to tell you that I know their morning will come. Father God, we ask you to just touch right now, Father God. To Father God, they need you right now in this time. It's a cloud over the family right now. It's a dark cloud over their head right now. But Father God, I know the sun will shine after a while. And Father God, we just want to say thank you. Father, give this family strength. Give them hope. Father, touch them right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, can't nobody touch them like you do. Father God, just one touch from you will be all right. Father God, we ask you to hold the wife up right now. Father God, I know her heart is heavy. But Father, if she keep her hands in your hand, I know everything will be all right. Father God, it's going to be hard. It's going to be lonely. But God, I know that you is a comfort keeper. And Father, we ask you to keep them right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we just want to say thank you again. In Jesus' name, we do pray and ask. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 It's the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to be glad and rejoice in it. This is a homegoing celebration, and let's just give Mr. Um, Baron a, a hand clap of praise for the life that he lived yeah. and the life that he touched. Um, I had the pleasure of, of just sitting down and just talking with Mr. Barron. Um, I, well, outside of the family column, Mr. Robert. <laughs> the other side of the family didn't know anything about Robert, but we called him Mr. Robert, and I had the opportunity to actually sit down and talk with him. And I, it was just amazing to just sit down and just talk and just listen to him, talk about the scouts, the Boy Scouts and everything, and talk about how um you know he had how he would leave other people to take care of them while he was gone and he always wanted to make sure that they were taken care of so we just thank god for mr baron and the life that he lived and the people that he took <coughs> so if y'all want to sing along with me you can <coughs> Truth is, I'm tired. Options are few. I'm trying to pray. But where are you? I'm all church style. Hurt in the abuse. I can't fake. What's left to do? The truth is I'm weak. No strength to fight. No tears to cry. Even if I try. But still my soul refuses to die. Mm -hmm. One touch will change my life Take me to the king I don't have much to bring My heart is torn in pieces It's my offering Lay me at the throne Leave me there alone. 
to gaze upon your glory and sing to you this song. Please take me to the King. Truth is, it's time to stop playing these games. We need your word for the people's pain. So, Lord, speak right now. Let it fall like rain. I'm desperate. I'm chasing after you. No rules, no religion. I made my decision to run to you. You're the healer that I need. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is torn to pieces. It's my offering. Lay me at the throne. Leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory and sing to you this song. Please take me to the King. Amen, amen, amen. Get your rear read silently. Take a few moments to read the obituary. words of expressions and the family asked that you limit it to two minutes and they have please so if you have words of expression you can come at this time words of expression Amen. 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 Good afternoon, family. Um, I don't have anything prepared, um, but I just felt the need to get up to um, say something and represent um, my father, my Darren, my mom, my brother, and my father. Um, and I just wanted to say that um, people are complicated. We all have our, our, our goodness and those things we want to remember. Um, and one thing that uh, I found out a couple of weeks, well, I guess it was last weekend, was that um, Aunt Darlene's family knew Uncle Norman, Uncle Norman by Robert. And we were sitting in the uh, hospital uh, room outside of the hospital, and uh, Reverend Marvin was saying he was he was laughing about something. He was laughing about oh Robert, Robert, Robert. And I thought to myself, Did you say Robert? and uh, and and so I looked at Susan. I said, and uh, it it was funny. And I thought, and then um, I don't know if I had 
CC or whoever it was that I asked for, maybe from as uh, Reverend Marvin, but I said, who is Robert? And uh, and and Aunt Geraldine said they call him Robert. I was like, why would they call Uncle Norman Robert? It doesn't make sense. And Susan said, well, is his middle name Robert? I was like, no. Many of them, did, many of our uncles and aunts didn't have middle names. Uncle Norman was Uncle Norman. But I said, you know, I don't think he had a middle name. And I, I just went back to all of my relatives, you know, my aunts and uncles, and thinking, I was like, no, he didn't have a middle name, you know. And so, um, and so uh, Reverend Marvin and everybody explained that, and Aunt, Aunt Geraldine explained that. Um, when he met Aunt Geraldine's family, Aunt Geraldine's mother, and somebody, you know, I'll make up a story because I can't remember the details, right? But Aunt Ger so, you know, I'm wrong, but just go with me here because it's, it's just a good story. But um, so in my mind, Aunt Geraldine's mother met Uncle Norman and instead of Uncle uh, Aunt Geraldine's mother, Louise, right? Hearing that his name was Norman, she heard Robert. And so I will continue making up this story, right? So, um, so Aunt, Aunt Geraldine's mother, so this is just a story in my head, right? Uncle Geraldine's mother met Marvin and Marvin's brother and, you know, whoever Marvin was seeing at the time. But everybody met all of Aunt Geraldine's family and they started calling him Robert. And so they just went along with it. And I suppose, you know, maybe Uncle Norman got a good giggle out of it because apparently he never corrected them. So when you, you know, at the repast, when you meet, meet Aunt Geraldine's family and they start talking about Robert, you know, they were talking about Uncle Norman. So it was, it was just a funny thing. And I just wanted to bring a little levity, you know, because this is a very difficult time for everybody. And I just want to uh, let everybody know that if, you know, in, in putting our focus on um, my dad, Uncle Jim Lee, and Aunt Geraldine, you know, and all the family who knew and loved um, Uncle Robert, that, you know, it's appreciated. And um, that's all I wanted to say, just, you know, just bring a little bit of levity up. Man. Man. My sister would like to say something for, about our father, Robert. <laughs> Hi, I'm Thessalonia. I'm the oldest. Um, what I wanted to say was, um, just like she just found out some things um, we didn't know. A um, long time ago, uh, I was well on a teenager, a young adult. I found out that um, it doesn't matter if you're raised by that person. You could still be just like that person. <laughs> and I find I looked like my dad. And I went to college for accounting and then found out later that he and my uncle was in accounting. Didn't have any idea. Um, um, but, um, but I love my dad a lot. You know, we were so Man. much alike. Kind of <laughs> this time, but we were a lot like I loved him. I knew he loved me. And um, you know, this still kind of hard. So, I Give my shaky voice. My name is Kerwin, Karen. What everybody else want to call him, I'm going to call him Uncle Norman. Now that's all he's ever been to me. Just want to say something about him. He was, the, he was a guy who 
when I was when I was I don't know how old I was. I think I was maybe in the third grade, fourth grade. Um, I'm trying to find out how to play chess. And he bought me. He found out, and I was trying to find out. He bought me a chess set. Told me to learn to play it and teach him. And so I did. To this day, I still play chess. I even told my kids, because my son told me the same thing. He wanted to learn how to play chess. I said, learn to play chess. Nope. He wanted to learn to play chess. So I did the same thing to them, both my son and my daughter, that he did to me. So I got a chess set. And I told them, the day that you beat me, I'll give you $100. They still haven't beaten me yet. <laughs> but for Uncle Norman, I beat the brakes off of him once I learned how to play. But I think he'd been, he was holding back the whole time he wanted to encourage me. And he has always been an encouragement for me, for all the things that I've done, all the accomplishments that I've done. He was always there to encourage me and to wish me well. That's all I want to say. Amen. He would always tell me, well, you're supposed to do this, and you did that, and you were supposed to do this, but there were a couple of things that uh, I never got a chance to talk to him about, and that was about uh, one of his, uh, his, his granddaughter. Uh, you may have uh, at some point uh, read about it, uh, the young lady uh, flying this big uh, plane down the Augusta. Uh, if I hadn't said anything about it, he would haunt me. <laughs> and so uh, I'm, I'm in pretty foul shape. Uh, but um, if you if you read it in the paper and someone told you, you can see that young lady now who flew that plane, all of the uh, accolades that she got. And uh, her name is Bessa. Washington, that's his granddaughter. That's the food you stand, please. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't, you don't find many young ladies doing the things that she has done. Um, she, when she got her first commission, um, we got on the car bad weather. We got, we went down. I was so proud of her, and I asked her, I said, oh, "So, what are you going to do now?" But she got a first commission. And she said, well, I don't know, maybe I'm the captain. Uh, you know, I'm sitting out there with my chest stuck out. And this is my, my niece, my great niece, rather. And uh, that was one other thing I wanted to share with you, but I can't think of it, so you have to forgive me. Thank you. Oh, I know what it was. <laughs> he would have he would said, Clive, why, why, do you, why do you say something about um, uh, Kerwin? Well, we, we, we have a lot. We have uh, a lot of things going on. So uh, Kerwin, that's some, that's some, I'm, uh, he uh, works for Delta, and he has these little planes going. So uh, Kerwin, I don't know. He, he's kind of kind of shy. He wants to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he just came, he just came up, but thank you. And that way, I can go and sleep tonight. Mama won't have me.
I just couldn't sit there. I represent the Ford family. Jeff Ford uh, is here today, and a lot of us are not able, a lot of them were not able to make it on the Ford side. We know Norma as a distant neighbor and as a brother because there's nothing Norma was called on to do that he didn't do it for us. We appreciate, and not only Norma, but the whole family, the entire family has been very close, reunions and all. Our 50, what, eight family reunion is coming up, am I correct? So uh, we all just one big happy family. And I want you to know our love, our thoughts, and our prayers are with you. And we, uh, we love you again and again and again. And thank you for being a part of our great big happy family. Amen. Good day, church. My name is uh, Danny. Good day, church. Uh, my name is Danny W. Barron, Sr. I met Norman when I moved back here approximately yeah, that's about seven years ago. And he came to me. I really haven't met any other Barron. I really don't know any of them. Maybe, I don't think I know any of them, to tell you the truth. I was gone, I've been gone for about 45 years. And I met Norman, he came to my restaurant. He sat down and talked to me. He said, young man, he said, I hear you're going to renovate this place and make it a restaurant. I said, well, that is my intention. I plan on doing it for approximately five years. So he told me his background. When he moved back here, he told me about some of the business adventure that he encountered when he moved back here some time ago. Now, him and I really share an ultimate goal. We both was in the military. See, I didn't know Norma was in the military. So he told me, said, you know, Danny, he kept calling me Ricky, which is my other brother. He kept on. We just couldn't get Dan and Ricky straight. He knew Ricky, but he didn't know me. So uh, he gave me some really, really professional advice. He told me by moving back home, he said, there's the do's and the do not. He said, there's the people that you need to meet. And, those <laughs> and there are some that you probably want to stay away from. But all the advice, all the advice, he would come in very, very methodical. He always had a word of wisdom for this young man. He always called me a young man. See, I knew Uncle Lee. I knew Uncle Fletch. I knew Uncle Andrew. And I think I think those are the only three I ever knew. One was named Claude. I never seen him before. I think he just stood up. Claude Perry, Clyde, yes. So I just want to say one thing. A couple of weeks ago, I was in the hospital because I had vertigo. And you know, I'm saying to myself, good Lord, I know I'm gonna have one drink last night, but good Lord. And uh, when the doctor came to me and they did all of these tests, let's see, this is, what I love about Barry, they ran all of these tests. And what he, he started said, did anybody in your family have this? And anybody in your family have this? And anybody in your family have this? And I started thinking, I said, you know, one thing about all, my granddad and all these brothers, we all slim and trim, you know. And for the most part, the Barron family is in pretty dog in good shape. And those, well, that's what we need to carry off. We need to carry on taking better care of ourselves all right, all right. And, and look at the people that came before us. Like all of our, everyone 
of my uncle, including my granddad, had a, I don't know how old Uncle Andrew, but I know each one had to be at least 80 years old. But see, that is, when, when we look at our, our, our genes, that's very, very, very good for the younger generation that's coming up after us. So Norman, I took all of your advice. I appreciate all of your advice. Uh, I just want you to know, without your guidance and supervision, because moving back here and, and seeing some of the things I've seen, I needed someone to talk to me. Mm -hmm. I needed someone to help guide me in the right direction. Because everybody you reach out to won't give you that advice. They won't give you that advice. They gave me excellent advice. I appreciate it. I thank God. That said, I, I salute you as a soldier. God bless you. But anyway, uh, Norm and I, we started our family reunion in uh, 1979, and it was right there where the first family reunion was right there where his house sits now. And we've been rolling on the road ever since with Norm and Clyde and all this. And, well, we, we hanging in there. We still trying to go, but Norm was always there. And we don't miss him. We always going to love him. And just like my brother said, he always got something good to keep. So I'm going to say this song for Norm and I. I uh, you can't hear me, but enjoy the movie. When you hear my home going, don't worry about me. But when you hear my home going, don't worry about me when you hear my home going. Don't worry about me. I'm just another soldier. Well, Lord, I'm going on home. But when you hear my home going, don't worry about me. But when you hear my home going, don't, don't worry about me. But when you hear my home going, don't worry about me. I'm just another soldier. Oh, Lord, I'm going on home. It's one thing that I know, Lord. I've been born again. You know I made preparation last Tuesday, but Lord, I didn't know when. But when you called me, I was ready to go home. Well, I'm packing up right now. Well, oh Lord. I'm on my way home, but when you hear my home going, don't worry about me. When you hear my home going, don't, don't worry about me. But when you hear my home going, don't worry about me. I'm just another soldier. Oh, Lord, Lord, I'm on my way home. 
Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. I hope it's Jesus calling. Amen. 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 First of all, we want to get it in order. If you have a cell phone, turn it off. You in God's house. And you at the right place at the right time. So Jesus is in the house. He ain't got no reason to call you on the phone. That's why he that's why he called me to preach today. How shall they preach except God sent them? Amen. So first of all, we truly thank God. Amen. I'm one of them old young preachers that was well trained. Amen. We trained on the job, so we ought to be trained in the church. Amen. First of all, give honor to this pastor, Pastor Kenny Parker. Amen. To God bless you. Amen. Amen. To this dear sister. Amen. Uh, to all of my brothers and sisters in Christ. So my brother-in-law was the best brother-in-law that I could find on the other side of Georgia. Amen. I'm going to scrape some of this stuff out so we won't all be confused. So <clears throat> we got time. Amen. First of all, to my sister, I love you. To my to her family, to all of the brothers, to the daughters, I love you. Trust God, family. Brother Norman Barron, when he came to Alabama, it's just like a nickname. Uh, everybody had a nickname. And when it was said, that's what we took it as to be, as a nickname. But that didn't make Norman just by being called Robert or Norman. What made him to be who he is was his heart his soul, his love that he showed to me, my brother, my mom, my family, but most of all, my sister. Amen. 41 years is a long time. Amen. Devoted to take on the responsibility of other children. Amen. It was a very task today. Amen. So he had a good heart, a good soul. Oh, I used to think he was a president. When I looked up there, I thought he was a lawyer. Amen. Amen. But but he loved, and when he came down to Alabama, uh, when he got there, he was a whole different person. I don't know how he was in Georgia. But when he got to Alabama, he, he'd get in the truck with me, and he knew that I wanted the type of people that love to listen to music and, and drive, and we put on Lee Williams. And all of a sudden, you all of his sickness, all of whatever he was dealing with, it left. He was just in the truck praising God. And that went long ago when my brother passed and he came down. and uh, He was deeply hurt about that. But one thing I do know, <clears throat> that when I looked at this program, uh, he gave his life to Christ. Y'all should have shouted right there. Somebody missed that, pal. I want, God told me to speak to the family and friends of somebody here that ain't saved. I feel it. He gave his life to Christ. You should have shot it right there again. So, so, let me come on this side. Uh, he gave his life to Christ. Amen. 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 And, and I think we preach that every Sunday, that Jesus died for your sins. But early Sunday morning, he got up. See, really, it should have been you on the cross. It should have been you slapped. It should have been you spit on. But guess what? He took your sins, went on the cross, but he got up. And guess what? You got to do the same thing Brother Norman did, or else you're going to hell. If you don't give your life to Jesus, you're headed to hell. 
Amen. Amen. You got the right one from Alabama. Amen. 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 This ain't my first funeral I preach. And I don't compromise just because of family. I don't even compromise at my church. I tell them just like a T.I. is. It's up to you yourself. But guess what? I know I'm going to heaven. Amen. So God have given me a word to give to you, family. We're going to bow our heads for a moment of prayer. I know one of them long-winded preachers. If you want to hear the rest of the service, come to the church Sunday. Right, Pastor? They're going to be open. Amen. If you don't want to come here, come to Alabama. Amen. But come and hear the word of God. Amen. Let us just bow our heads for a moment of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we come right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We come here with this family, Lord, lifting them up to you. We lift my sister up to you. We lift these children up to you, Lord, that these brothers, these uncles, nephews, nieces. Lord, we lift this whole entire family. The hearts are heavy right now. But we know that you is a burden bearer. And you said if we bring it to you and cast it on you because you cares about us. You don't want us walking around with our head down, but you want to walk with our head lifted up because you said look to the hills from which comes thy help. And knowing all our help comes from thee and thee alone. Lord, we said thank you for Brother Norman that he gave his life to you. Because over in John said you must be, you got to be born again. Lord, we thank you for the life that he lived. We thank you for as he was on this journey, the friends that he made. Lord, but you already had appointed him a day and time that he had to leave. And Lord, we said thank you. We love you. We thank you for the legacy he left behind. Lord, we pray that they would take it up, Lord, and use it in a way that, that it will glorify you. That when it's all said and done, you get the glory. And you get the praise in Jesus' name. And the church said amen, 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 and amen. Once again, amen. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. We're going to look at the book of Proverbs. The book of Proverbs. Solomon is the writer of this book. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5. If you need any type of comfort, uh, the word of God will give you comfort. I, I didn't say the word of Buddha. Uh -oh. I didn't say the word of Muhammad. I said the word of God. Amen. The word of God. Anybody know the word of God will give you comfort? Somebody ought to be a witness for God. No, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Watch this. When we get on these jobs and we, we do everything the boss man said do. We go to these concerts, these Class reunion, we, we do everything. We holler so loud, but we're getting God's how we get quiet. Who you think woke you up this morning? Who you think put food on your table? Who you think gave you a degree? Who you think that made you? I think some of I think somebody think they made themselves because I believe over in Genesis, God created the heaven and earth, God created man. If God created man. Who is you? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Let me hear what Solomon is going to say to us. Because somebody think they trusting in themselves, but I'm, I'm here to tell you. You're trusting in yourself. You won't make it. Amen. Pro Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. But in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen, amen, amen. What Solomon here is telling us this afternoon, we need to rely on God. Family, you need to rely on God. Amen. I'm, I'm going to tell you this right here. I don't care how close you is. Sooner or later, family will lead you. Amen. Telephone calls are going to stop coming. Visits are going to stop coming. But you better rely on God. Amen. 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 You, you don't believe it. You don't believe it. Because right now, everybody's here for you. But sooner or later, by and by, you better rely on God. I'm a witness. This, 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 is, this is not my first funeral I'm preaching. This is not my first time losing a, a family member because when everything else ceases, pick up the phone and call somebody and tell them you need some help. 
The first thing they're going to do is look at that, that phone ID and say, uh oh, can't answer it. Delete. It's good to be a family. It's good to be there for one another. But your total trust, the better be in God. I have a witness here right now. Amen. Amen. When you're going to the doctor, who are you putting your trust in? You better not put your trust in that doctor. You better put your trust in the doctor, the great physician. Solomon here letting us know that you got the trust in the Lord. El Shaddai, Jehovah Jireh, Elohim, God himself, King of kings, Lord of lords, the great I am. Solomon is telling you right now, sisters, daughters, brothers, put your trust in God. The very one woke you up this morning. Put food on your table. Guess what? He could have left Brother Norman and took one of y'all. Somebody out there, I can see it. You know who's turning up at God. But guess what? What's inside of you belongs to God. I'm not talking about a body. I'm talking about that soul. They don't believe it, Pastor. Anybody out there believe that? When, let me go and take you to the Bible in the book of Genesis. When God created man, man was laying down from the dust of the ground. God breathed. He got up, started walking. Now, from Adam's generation all the way down to your generation, that's how you got him. So if you came from Adam, you came from God. Because the same breath that's in Adam is in you. But guess what? When Adam sinned, there's an appointment that you don't even know. You don't even know the deaf angels just came through him. He looking for somebody. Because you have an appointment. It wasn't his sickness. Somebody asked me at the hospital, what did he pass up? I don't know. I ain't no doctor. I'm a preacher. I'm going to tell you what he died of. It was a point in time. It was nothing you could do about it. The doctor, I told them what they need to do. The doctor just need to move out the way. Family, pray your prayer. Hey, all move out the way. Then let God step in. See, sometimes we in front of God when we trying to do the work. God don't need no help. Because if we rely on God, we're going to give it all to him. My Lord, you got to rely on God, the one that can speak and man can get up, the one that can lay down. Yeah, yeah, I don't finna tell you, finna tell you something with the three things gonna be out your way. The first thing is you must have faith. You must have faith. You must have faith. Trust in the Lord. You must have faith. Watch this. We have faith in everything else. You just walked in, ain't thought about the pews. You just sat down. You didn't ask the pastor, pastor, where them pews hold in? You just sat down. That's why you got to rely on God. You got to have that faith to trust God. Look what Romans 10 and 17 say. So faith come by what? Hearing and hearing by the what? Word of God. You got to hear the word of God. The word of God in the beginning was the word. Jesus is the word of God. He is God. Uh-oh. I didn't, I didn't get no amens off that. Let me help you out again. He's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. They, we don't serve no three gods. There's only one. Jesus had to leave him if he wouldn't have never left. And went to the cross, the Holy Spirit would have never came. He said, I'm going to send you a what? I ought to have some church folks here. Amen, amen. I ought to have some church folks to know what the word of God said. I'm going to send you a comforter. This comforter that's, that's in you, he's going to give you comfort. He's going to give you peace that passes all understanding. Man can't give you that. Money can't get you that. Degrees on the walls can't get you that. I don't care how many degrees you have on the wall, but that don't buy that right there. You'll lose your mind. You wonder why folks going crazy in the world today? Because they had to accept Jesus Christ. It's not the police job. It's the church job. And if we start spreading the good news, Robert Hill was a male man. 
He was delivering mail. And ain't no telling what he was telling folks on the job, on the route, or inside the building. The good news. Get the good news. The good news was who he accepted was Jesus Christ. You must have faith. Job, 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 Job knew that, how to have faith in God. Look what Job did. Job lost everything less than 24 hours. Everything. Finances. See why we ain't praising God? We ain't lost in that. See, we got these good jobs and these big old houses and fine suits and everything and think we got it going on. But just let God come through there. Woo! And take that. What you going to do then? Who you going to rely on then? Joel relied on God after all that, all his children. Can, you can't even imagine when we lose one loved one. But Joel lost all of his children. But, but look here, the wife was left behind. Because God was going to double him for his trouble. Joel stood the test. Joel said, my redeemer's Livings. He didn't say your redeem. He said my personal. See, because when you're making the personal, I can't speak for you. Because I don't know if you is he's your redeemer. But he's not your redeemer. I can't speak for you. Because you may be serving another God, but I'm serving the only one true living God. And he said, I am the way, the truth, and I have some church folks here right now. Come on now. You ain't got to be afraid. You serve a true and living God. Who you putting your Faith in. These, these, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. I know, see, let me tell you, brother, brother, brother Norm. Brother Norm has been trying to get down to the church to hear me preach, and he finally got there that Sunday morning. And he told me, he said, Brother Law, you don't mind telling like that. I said, You right about that. I said, Because you know why? I ain't scared of nobody. Because, see, I came out the streets. So you got to remember that. If you came out, I had a big education on the wall, the big degrees and all that. I had the discreet sense. That's why I know how we is. Because half of us was out there with me. See, I was a sinner. Like Saul, I was saved by grace. And my degree is born again in Jesus Christ. So, so, so I realized that who I got to put all of my and rely on is nobody but God. And that's why I can stand flat-footed and tell you, you got to rely on God. Amen. I ain't talking about the jobs and everything. You got to rely on God. Paul, Paul, Paul no relied on God when they were behind the Philippi jail. They were locked up because of telling folks about you. Folks ain't going to like it because you tell folks that they need to get saved. And they don't want, they, they, that's, that's when the devil get mad. See, the devil don't want you saved. He wants you to go to hell with him because hell is real. He heading out of the way, but he want to pull a minute he can. But the thing is, God said, I'm giving you another chance. Norma is telling y'all right now, get saved. He's all right. We don't want to got the problem. If you're not saved, you got a problem. And your problem is you got to stand before God one day. And you got to give account of everything you don't. Is it good or bad? I don't care how bad it was. You're going to stand before God. Amen. I, I, I ain't talking about family member, but I'm talking about God. You better believe it. You better believe it. You better believe it. You better believe it. Look at him. Look at him. Look what those Hebrew boys did. I'm moving along as I tell you about them. See, they stood the test. They stood the test. They stood the test. King never tried to this big bad king. But you know what? God allowed him to chastise him. God will allow the enemy to chastise you. Somebody probably saying, no, you won't. Okay. Keep living. Keep living. When I'm going back to Alabama, somebody going to send me a telegram and say, that pastor was so right. Because I know in this church it's being preached every Sunday, but we just don't want to hear it. We hear everything else, but we don't want to hear it. We get on Facebook, we hear everything. Them folks are telling lies. To one, two, three. And right here in front of the pastor won't hear nothing. Come on, I just don't believe what he's saying. But I don't Facebook. God be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And don't even know who that person is. But you're looking dead at the man of God. And he's telling you, but the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life. 
I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I know I'm right. I'll have some church folks to bag me up. Amen. Faith, you got to have faith. And then not only you got to have confidence, your confidence got to be in God. Personal relationship. I just want to ask you right now, do you have that personal relationship with God? If you, if you don't have that relationship, I'm going to ask this question. Have you come to a place in your life right now? You got confidence now. You know it without a shadow of a doubt. If you was to die, where you sitting at? Do you know that you'll go and be with the Lord? I want that to soak in. Because somebody that's probably saying, hey, well, I think so. Well, let me tell you, let me go and cut it off. I don't care how much you come in this church and go in that choir law, sing like a mockingbird, urge at the back door, sit on the pews, even stand in the pool pit, even drive the church van. That, that just church work. You do that because you saved. But the main thing, do you have that relationship that you've been born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb, that you know you're going to go and be with the Lord? If you don't know that, I'll be in a hurry. Uncle Norman, father, brother, whatever he is to you, he got saved. But what about you? What about you? That's the key. What about you? See, see we, we accept everything else. But what about you? See, the fair home man undid his part. But guess what? Who's next? Who's next? Somebody next. I already know it. But you don't know who it is. But you next. Somebody probably saying, Pastor, don't need to be saying that, but it's there. Man is appointed. And then after your appointment, you leave him to judgment. You got to stand before God and give account. The third thing we see, after you have faith, you have confidence, you must know who got all power. Oh, I get so happy. And the reason why I get happy is because he saved my soul. See, this just ain't no everyday thing. Uh, or just on Sunday morning. This is me every day. See, when I was out there in the world, I did everything. But this is this, this me every day. I ain't got to put on no act for nobody. This is me. Because, see, I almost went to hell. But God reached way down. Picked me up. Set my feet on solid ground, gave me another chance to stand for him. And I said, Lord, if I stand for you, I'll tell him about your son, that he came down through 42 generations, born of a virgin Mary, took the world's sins upon him, nailed him to a cross. But early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, he got up all power in your hand. But the question is, do you know? Do you know? My brothers and sisters, you must rely on God. Amen. Let, let, me, let me give you this. I'm moving on out the way. See, we always hurry when it comes to a funeral. We always want everything to go. Everybody been sung this song. Even the funeral home folks. I work for a funeral home and everybody be in a rush. When it comes to the word of God. Well, see, God's word is what y'all need. It's not food, money. You need the word of God. And, 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 and the way you're going to get the word of God, you got to receive it. You got to receive it. Brother Norman. Receive the word of God. How shall they hear without the preacher? If you go back in the Bible days, John was preaching. Paul was preaching. Noah was preaching. And I'm preaching the same thing as this pastor down here preaching. Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. This world is on for destruction. And if you ain't reading your Bible, you'll never know. Well, you can't understand anyway, because guess what? 
you got more knowledge in front of God than you got the word of God in front of the knowledge. See, we think we know it all, but you'll never see what's going on in this world until you be born again. Spiritual eye, not physical, but spiritual. And that's how you can understand what's going on here today. If you give your life to Christ, you can be born again. Sleep on, my brother. Take your rest. You don't have to worry about nothing down here. Because the same God that you serve, that you gave your life to, your wife has gave her life to him too. Your daughter's name and your brothers and your nieces and nephews, pray that they have did the same thing. Sleep on. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Now y'all, wait a minute. Wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Now, now, I just said, when we had these football games, and we, watch this, and we'll move out the way. If the President of the United States walked through that door, will hollow tile lungs fall out? What's wrong, so, I can't say nothing, because, you know, I was hollering so loud. But the president, he got to stand before God, too. You know, I, I'm higher than the president. His job don't mean nothing. Because you know why? Either he got to come through me, or he got to come through this pastor, or he got to come through a pastor up there where he is. And he got to accept Jesus the same way. He just don't get in because he's the president. So, 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 so what I want you to do is you give God a hand clap of praise for your husband, for your daddy, for your brother, your uncle, whatever he is. For the life, eight, well, 88 years old, 89, 88, eight, 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 you don't thank God, I'm going to get some praise. So let me hear. Give God some praise. <laughs> give God some praise. You ought to stand up on your feet. And give God some praise because he's worthy to be praised. God bless you. God keep you my prayers.
Let's give a hand clap of praise for a life well lived and well served. First, we would like to acknowledge the presence of God and His Holy Spirit to the fine eulogist of the hour with that electrifying eulogy to Pastor Kenneth Parker, to Pastor Leonard. We acknowledge your presence and all of your moral support um, that you've given this family throughout the duration of their grief. They will have me to say thank you to this beautiful edifice here at New Salem Baptist Church for opening the doors to the many family and friends who have gathered from afar and near, who have traveled from afar and near, just to be here with this family today. The family will have me to say thank you. And also at this time, if there are any veterans, could you please stand because we would like to acknowledge your presence and thank you for what you did to serve our country. And let's give them a hand clap of praise. Thank you so much for your service. And also to this family, on behalf of McCoy Funeral Home, we do say thank you for entrusting Mr. Barron into our care. And I uh, was talking to Ms. Uh, Geraldine the other day, and I looked at the picture that was on the obituary. I said, man, I said, I'm going to steal that pole. So the next time you see me, I might be on this wall in the funeral home just like that. <laughs> I didn't think he was a veteran. I thought he was a professor or a doctor or something on that picture. We joked about that. Um, but just to bring a little laughter to your soul because it's medicine to the bone and the marrow. Um, but we just certainly must thank God for that smile that was just on your face a second ago. And at this time, we also like to present a token of appreciation by way of a portrait on behalf of McCarthy. <laughs> God bless you and keep you as our sincere prayer. At this time, this does conclude the homegoing services here in the church. There will be repasts there in Woodland at their community park uh, just after the service. And also the internment is uh, scheduled for Monday um, at 1230 at the Fort Mitchell National Cemetery. The uh, interment is scheduled for Monday at 1230 at the Fort Mitchell National Cemetery. At this time, we'll have the clergyman stand, lead us out, and all stand with the exception of the family. God bless you. I think we have about four uh, floral attendants, uh, nieces, or uh, any family and friends that serve uh, flower attendants, about four floral attendants.
Oh, 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 oh,